Hi everyone, welcome back to the AI language. So last time we have looked at this authorization flow that works uh, with MCP to secure the connection between an MCP client and an MCP server. And for this, we use something called an authorization server. And uh, this flow has been covered in detail with all the steps starting from the first MCP request, then starting from discovery and then all the authorization steps that happen. And finally, going ahead with the final MCP communication after authentication with a valid token. So uh, please look at the last lecture to understand the details around this particular authorization flow. Today, what we are going to do is we're actually going to implement this authorization flow using Google as an authorization server. So we'll use Google's cloud and build the authorization server flow over there and then we are going to use one of our MCP servers and client which we have built previously and I'll go through them in detail so that you understand how this works together. So let's take this step by step. In this lecture I'm going to cover the authorization server setup and then we're going to follow up with the remaining steps in the next few lectures. So please have a look at those as well. So first let's set up our Google Cloud project. You can look at the resources for the lecture to understand how to create a Google Cloud account and a Google Cloud project to proceed with this. Once you have done that, you should just visit console.cloud.google.com. You can click on the projects over here and you can actually create a new project from here. I have created this new project called my edu project and just select the new project that you create so that you have it live and selected over here. Now we need to search for APIs and services. So let's do that and click over here. So once you click on this, you will come to the APIs and services screen. All right. So once you're here, we need to configure the OAuth consent screen. So click over here and you'll come to this OAuth overview page. And now you need to click on get started. All right. So why is this step important? Because this is what users will actually see when Google asks them, do you want to give this app access to your profile? All right. So let me go back to this sequence diagram over here. And as we have seen over here, there's a user who's using an MCP client through an app, right? And they're trying to authenticate themselves to an MCP server, which is hosting some kind of resource like a tool or a database or something access to some important resource which is protected. So they want to authenticate themselves and they're trying to use a third party authorization server because they don't want the user does not want to provide the MCP client and the application their Google password, right? So what they will do is they will authenticate themselves to an authorization server instead. This is what we are building over here and this authorization server or this authorization flow is going to ask the user that this is the app that you'll finally grant access to. Do you want to give this access, uh, this app access to your profile, right? So it will set the app name, the logo, the permissions, which builds user trust and ensures compliance with Google's policies. All right. So we're going to provide an app name over here. So let's call this a uh, fast MCP server. And then we're going to provide a user support email. So over here, when you click on the drop down, you'll see the email associated with your account. That's what I see. And I'm going to select that. So once you have provided the app information, you need to specify whether your audience is internal or external. So internal over here means that only members of your Google workspace within your organization can use it and external over here. It means that it's available for any user, any test user with a Google account. All right. So this is what you will typically pick if you are building something for public use. So I'm going to select external over here and click next. Again, you need to provide an email address over here as contact information. So you can provide whatever email address you want. And finally, you need to agree to their policies over here. So select this box if you agree and then click on continue. Let's click on create. All right. So this creates the OAuth configuration for us. And now we need to set up some more things over here, which we'll do next. Great. So now we will create an OAuth 2.0 client ID. So we need to again navigate to APIs and services. So let's click over here. And now let's go to credentials. And then let's click on create credentials over here. We'll select OAuth client ID, which is requests user consent. So your app can access the user's data. All right. So let's click on this. All right. So here we are at the create OAuth client ID screen and let's understand what we are doing in this step. So what we're doing is we are creating an OAuth client ID in Google Cloud. But you notice something important that in our setup, the app being registered is not the MCP client. So it's called an OAuth client ID, but we are doing this for the MCP server. So why is this for the server and not for the MCP client? Because in OAuth, the application that receives the user's browser redirect 
after login is the one that needs the client ID. All right. So the MCP server is the one that will expose this redirect URL, which will be slash auth slash callback endpoint to handle this redirect. All right. So we'll see this as we go along. The MCP client doesn't handle user logins directly. Instead, it later presents tokens to the MCP server. And we have seen that in our auth overview. All right. So from Google's perspective, the MCP server is the OAuth client. And that is why in Google Cloud, we register the server as the OAuth client application. Now, what exactly is this client ID? So it's a unique identifier that Google is going to issue to your MCP server. So it looks like a long string ending with dot apps dot Google user content dot com. Every time your server redirects users to Google's login page, it includes the client ID in the query. So Google knows which application is requesting this authorization. All right. So later when exchanging an authorization code for tokens, the server again provides its identity using the client ID and possibly the client secret as well. All right. So now we can go ahead and create this OAuth client ID. So we'll select an application type over here. So we'll select web application. Then we need to give it a name. So we'll give it the name fast MCP server. Okay. Then we have the authorized JavaScript origins. So what we'll do is we'll add a URI over here and this will be your app domain. But what we'll be doing is we'll be testing from localhost, right? Once you actually deploy it on some domain, you can actually add that domain over here because the request will be coming from your apps domain and those need to be trusted by Google's backend. And uh, that's why we need to provide this URL over here. For now, we will be making requests from localhost. All right. So we'll add HTTP colon slash slash localhost and then we'll provide a port. So let's provide 8000 over here. And this will ensure that when we test, we'll send a request from localhost 8000 and Google will allow this request to go through. All right. So let's click on add URI. We can add more if you want, uh, but we're going to not add more. And uh, then we have the authorized redirect URIs. Okay. And again, this is for use with requests from a web server. So we'll add our callback endpoint over here. And that is going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8000. And then we'll put the slash auth slash callback endpoint over here. Okay. So it's important that this redirect URI must match exactly with what we configure in the server. All right. So if your server says slash auth slash callback, you must configure the exact path here. If you change it to slash auth slash Google slash callback, then both your Google Cloud Console and your server configuration must use the same path. So we are going to use this over here and we are later going to use this in our application. And uh, why is this critical? Because this is where Google will redirect the user after login, sending back the authorization code. All right. And if it doesn't match exactly, the login will fail. So let's click on add URI. Let's delete this other one over here and let's click on create. Now, once you hit save, Google will generate two things. It will generate a client ID which looks like a long string ending in apps.googleusercontent.com. So this is our client ID over here. All right. The second thing that it creates is a client secret, which starts with something like G O C S P X this one over here. All right. And uh, again, these are the credentials your fast MCP server will use when it exchanges the authorization code for tokens. All right. So the best practice over here is download the JSON file containing these credentials. So let's click on download JSON over here and you'll get this downloaded over here, right? Store this file very, very securely and never commit this to GitHub or version control. Okay. In production, always use environment variables or a secret manager. So we can click on OK over here to close this dialog. And just remember that once you close this dialog, you will not be able to access this again. So it's important that you download your file over here. And just in case you did not do it, you can actually follow the process again and just create it once more and then use that downloaded file. All right. So this is it for the backend setup on Google Cloud. You have configured the consent screen so users know who is asking for access. You have created an OAuth client ID and you have configured the origin from which you're allowing this to be called. And you've also configured the redirect URI where you should be sent after authorization. And the third thing is that you have saved your credentials securely. So you have the consent screen, you have the OAuth client ID, origins and redirect URIs. And thirdly, you have the credentials securely saved. So now your fast MCP server can use these credentials to authenticate users with Google via OAuth 2.0. In the coming lectures, we are going to make our MCP server and MCP client that will work with this authorization server that we just made. 